It might not be one of the biggest days of racing coming up on Sunday, but it's sure to be one of the most memorable this season, as those that are there on Sunday at Chartin will be able to say they were there when the Durban Demon called it a day. Here's what we've got coming up on HK Direct, or today it's the Douglas White Tribute Show, as we pay tribute to the amazing career that he's had in the saddle. And it's a career that began when Douglas had his first ever race ride as a 16-year-old at Clarewood in Durban, South Africa. But Hong Kong has been home for the Durban Demon since the 1997-98 racing season. In that time, he's ridden 1,813 winners, including tasting success in our biggest events, three Hong Kong derbies, three QE2s. Plus, he knows what it takes to win on our biggest day, winning the Vars, the Cup and the Mile on International. National Day. And as the South African superstar prepares to call it a day in at the saddle, Andrew Lejeune caught up with him. So Douglas, it all ends on Sunday, the riding career. End of an era. Um, no one's ridden more winners, over 1,800. No one's won more championships. No one might ever. 13 consecutive. No one's more, more prize money, over 1.5 billion as well. You're the first jockey to ride 100 winners in a season as well. Um, how do you feel going into the weekend and what do you think the emotions will be like on the, on the day itself? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's starting to set in uh, as, as we get closer to Sunday. It's realisation and it's starting to set in. But fortunately, you know, you can, you can look back at, at all the good times and all the success and all the achievements. And you kind of think, well, you've done it and you can let go. Uh, I've got a great opportunity coming going forward and um, yeah look it's going to get emotional on Sunday I know that um, I'll, I'll do my best to hold it together <laughs> but it's going to get emotional and it's it's going to be a stage of a, a stage in my life that's that I've done and it's all I've known what to do so um, uh, not looking forward to it but looking forward to the next chapter you had a little dress rehearsal for it, I suppose, with, with Happy Valley. That must have been quite special as well. You've had some great moments around there. Yeah, look, that was special, but at the end of the day, I, I still had a couple of meetings to go. So um, this is going to be the grand finale, and uh, I'm ready for it. So what happens? Monday morning, you wake up, you're not a jockey anymore. You've got till September to get yourself <laughs> sorted out, and then you become a trainer. What do you do between, between now and then? Well, I'm, I'll be heading off to, uh, to the UK. To work alongside the likes of William Haggis and Sir Michael Stout, who have been very kind in offering me a position to come and see how the yards operate. And from there, I'll, I'll head over to Australia, where David Hayes and Chris Waller have been absolutely fantastic in offering me similar positions. And um, obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll be back here, sort of beginning or mid June, and uh, try and set up. The yard and get everything going and get my team together so we can hit the, hopefully be ready for the first day. Over those uh, the, the years in the saddle, um, obviously natural ability, drive and determination has you know got you as many winners and championships you have. But people have talked about being a people person as well and managing those relationships. Is there a, a shift in the dynamic, even a subtle one now, with the owners, I suppose, in terms of you know how you manage and, and cultivate those partnerships? Now you're not a jockey, but you're a trainer. I think what I've learnt along the way that's certainly going to stand me in good stead for dealing with with owners and um, clients. I've always had the philosophy that rather nip it early. So you know, if if, if there is a problem, I'd prefer to sort it out as quick as possible before it festers, and a problem can become a bigger problem the longer you leave it. So I've always tried to work along those bases and be as open and honest as as possible and I think people have appreciated that um, with the years that I've dealt with trainers and, and owners and look it's going to be a different ball game now because I'm the boss and I've got to run a yard and I've, I've realistically they, they, they're my clients and I've, um, I'm doing a job for them now so the ball game's changed slightly but I think the work process and the thought process that, that I've had throughout my career is going to stand me in good stead. The other dynamic that changes, obviously, as well, is the one with with you and the and the riders as well. You've been competing, you've been, you know, racing against them tooth and nail out on the track. Um, it now switches from you being 
um, in competition with them, you now want them on the side, they're your allies. Um, how does that work again? Do you just draw a line in the sand? You, you've been in a unique position, the fact that you've ridden so close to them, you know all their strengths and weaknesses if they have them, I suppose, having ridden so close up and, and first hand. But do you wipe the slate clean and you put everything aside and now you're in the business of training winners, they're in the business of riding winners and you just want the best available? I think so. I, I, I wouldn't just wipe the slate clean. I'd certainly, I'd go into whichever horse I've got, I would think about it and, and try and make use of the best jockey that I think will suit that particular horse. Um, they might not be available and I'd then have to go to who I think would be the, the second best. But I mean, I think all the jockeys in Hong Kong, uh, they, they, they're, they're not here for for a reason. I mean, they are here for a reason. They're not here because they, they aren't capable. So the club does their work and whoever gets to make it in Hong Kong would make it anywhere. So realistically, I think all the jockeys here would, would, would hold their own anywhere. So it, they've got a good bunch and um, I'd be using anyone and everyone. But f first and foremost would be whichever jockey I thought would suit that particular horse. Yeah, I think someone said in the past you could throw a set of colours into the weighing room. Yeah pretty much ever picks it up, you, know, you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't be too disappointed. Um, in terms of going forward then from here, I don't know if you set out some, some targets and goals when you first started riding here, but as a trainer, what are the, the short term and, and the long term goals and objectives that you, you're trying to achieve? I certainly set out goals when I was a jockey and I think it's, it's important, but you know, I, 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 it's going to be difficult for me to set a goal my first season. Um, I think that if I can keep happy, healthy, sound horses, present them in the best manner that I, I can. And I think my goal would be to run a tight ship and, and my management, my staff, uh, to be a team, get them working for me as against me and get them wanting to work for the horse, for, for my yard. And I think if I can manage that, the rest shouldn't and will fall into place. Started off talking, you said it's going to be emotional on the weekend. You can't, it's hard to predict you know, how you're going to feel, but do you think it's going to be hankies at the ready, do you think, on, on Sunday? <laughs> I'm hoping not, but <laughs> more than likely. It's, as I said earlier, it's, it's, um, it's all I've ever done, it's all I've ever known, and I've been on a horse since I was two years old. And uh, I, uh, you know, Waking up in the mornings and riding work, some people don't enjoy it. Fortunately enough, I do. And it's been my job, and it's going to be, yeah, it's going to get emotional having, well, knowing that I'm, I'm not going to be waking up and competing with these guys and having input in the mornings and feedback to the trainers. So, but it's, it's been a good chapter. It's been a good venture. Well, it's been an incredible career in the sale. Douglas. I said over 1,800 winners, those 13 straight um, championships, a record that may never, ever be beaten. But um, looking forward, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic training career. How about we sit down or meet up in 20 years time again and we can reminisce over the, the records you've broken as a trainer, the great champions you've trained and, and the new records that you've set. Yeah, no, well, that, that'll be something uh, I'm looking forward to. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes, who knows where we'll all be in 20 years' time. What we do know, in the past 20 years, there's no doubting the profound influence that Douglas White has had on Hong Kong racing. And that's something that's truly been recognised by several members of the racing community in recent weeks. He's very intelligent. He, he knows how to read the race very well. Um, obviously, he knows how to choose horses very well. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to be that successful for so long. He's a type of a jockey that if you don't have yourself playing at your very best, it's very likely that you're going to get beaten by him because he's a brilliant jockey. He was, seemed to be very tactical all the time. He would be able to put his horses in the right place at the right time. But the way he used to manage them and to get them to the line without having to be full out aggressive on them. And uh, they just seemed to be very smooth in their runs. And uh, he always managed to get the best out of them and just enough to win and the best thing about I found was he was always able to work the handicap for the ratings nicely so they always were able to win more races. When I was an apprentice I got lots of suspensions. The um, steward said to me, um, Keith you can't do this anymore, you're going to lose your license and so they have this um, senior jockey helping me out and which is Douglas White. Ever since I had his help and my suspension has dropped Douglas basically just saved my license, my career, and 
he gave me a lot of advice. He's done a lot of things that I think uh, I, will, I will be dreaming of one day to do. He, he's such a host man, when you, when, even when you see him on a host. And for young guys like us, uh, you know, trying to learn and, 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 and improve our riding, uh, we, we, we can say we can look up to him and, and learn from him. Douglas symbolizes the rise of Hong Kong racing to an international top class level. I will never forget, in a way, I was here, uh, uh, came into Hong Kong April 1998. So the Hong Kong International Races in December were my first international race meeting. And Indigenous was, in my view, the first real international top class halls in Hong Kong. Now Indigenous digs deep, Hong Kong roars, Indigenous goes to the front, Derazari can't go with him and they've done it, Indigenous and Nick. And when you see the ride, and I can memorize it pretty well, how cool he rode this race, how he waited and then how he made the final attack. This is for me that symbolizes what Hong Kong racing is all about and Douglas was the one who is definitely a key contributor to this development. You know, Hong Kong has come a long way. Over the last 20 years, Hong Kong has climbed to being one of the leading racing jurisdictions in the world. I think uh, in the course of that, Douglas played a very significant role and he has contributed a lot to putting Hong Kong on the map. And I think that contribution must be acknowledged. So Douglas White's final day as a jockey will begin when he rides Mr Croissant in the second race on the programme. He'll then ride Murray's partners and improving type Dances with Dragon, who's won his last two in a row and is really in fine form at the moment, as is Storm Signal. He's barely put a foot wrong this season. While his final two rides as a jockey are on two first starters from the John Moore Stable in Elite Patch and Uncle Steve. It's sure to be a special day at the races this weekend, so make sure you join the trackside team for all of the action. The live coverage begins at 12.30, and for all the lead-up to the meet, including the Racing to Win preview, go to the website hkjc.com, and you can also visit Twitter for all the information there through social media. That's it for this edition of the show. Join us for another big show next week. Adam Campton is our guest in the studio and we'll be looking ahead to Beauty Generation trying to make it seven wins on the trot when he lines up in the Group 1 Queen Silver Jubilee Cup. That'll be the highlight amongst the car that also includes the Hong Kong Gold Cup and the next leg of the four-year-old series, the Hong Kong Classic Cup. But until next time, it's goodbye from here on HK Direct.